Hi, we're the James family. Are you sick of your day-to-day -day life? Ever thought about doing something different? Well, we did just that. We bought an unfinished aluminium catamaran and we're fixing her up to sail around the world. Come along to the journey. If you have been following our journey, you'll know that we haven't been 100% happy with our current propellers. Well, we're super excited to share that they won't be on for much longer. This week, we are talking about the different types of propellers and the type of props we chose and why. If you've been following along, you'll know that Sam has not been 100% happy with our props. And after a bit of convincing and persuasion, um, he's finally convinced me to get new props. So Sam did a whole bunch of research on different types of props and everything, and we landed on Flexifold. So um, Sam went straight to the manufacturer out of Denmark and we did communications back and forth with them. We gave them a whole bunch of details about our boat, um, size, weight, shafts, everything, and then they sized us up with the correct size propellers. So, um, we paid for the, um, super impressed with them, we paid for the propellers, and then automatically that same day, we got an email with a tracking number, and then the very next morning, we got another notification that from Denmark, the props were now in Singapore. So we're located in Australia on the East Coast, currently in Airlie Beach. And yeah, so within one day, they're in Singapore. Very next day, they're in Brisbane, and we had them within three days. So very impressed with them. And the communication back and forth has been absolutely fabulous. So this box right here is one of the propellers. So we're gonna go inside and unbox it. And oh, it is a bit heavy too, so let's head inside. Cut open the sides. All right. So we've got the bit of information about Flexifold. So they come with the anodes, this is the shaft bit that goes on to the end. Now our shafts are one and, they say on them, one and a quarter inch. So there we go. And it's real heavy, really good. This is the end plate. And they also come with the Allen keys and everything you need to put them together. And then the other part of them these are the blades. to go with them as well. There we go. So, that is everything. So then we'll put this all together and we'll have some new propellers. And now my two kids get to open the other box. What is it? That 
What's up is down, what's left is right Chasing stars and holding view I can't see the end, but we'll see it through As Kate mentioned, I uh, did a tremendous amount of research into new propellers and I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole. So I wanted to just uh, explain a, a few different things about propellers uh, and then the reasons why we went with the ones we did. Now there's three main types of propellers on a sailboat. You've got fixed pitch propellers. Now what that means is that they don't, there's no real moving parts or anything like that. And they are on there nice and stable. This is off our outboard. It's just to show you a different type of propeller. When you're looking at it, there's two main uh, aspects to all propellers. One is the diameter, and that's how big it is. And the other one is the pitch, and that's how far it will screw through the water with zero resistance. I looked at going fixed pitch uh, for several main reasons. The first one is price. They're the cheapest simplicity. They're also very basic, no real moving parts, and very, very durable. And what I was gonna do is I was gonna put an electric engine down in there so that when we are sailing along and this is spinning, it will we'll have regen capabilities and then an electric engine when it's nice and sunny to help move us along next to the diesel engine. It started to get a little bit complicated and for the DIYer I found that it, it, the technology isn't quite there yet with uh, how much weight I'd have to put on to the benefits I would have to get. So that one there has been put on hold until the next time we reprop the boat. Um, so that meant that fixed pitch propellers were out. The next one was to a feathering propeller. Now the way a feathering propeller works is that when you are motoring the pitch is in, when you sail the prop feathers and basically makes it a lot more streamlined through the water, reduces the resistance when you're sailing and away you go. You will not have nowhere near as much parasitic drag than if the blades are on the side. Another advantage of feathering propellers is they're quite good in reverse. So these are our Kiwi props. The way these ones work is uh, when you're motoring along, they're like that. When you sail, they'll just naturally feather. When you want to go into reverse, there's spring-loaded tension. It locks these things over here, the retainings, and that locks it in reverse and then you have a nice big thick pitch in reverse. These are the most expensive option, not Kiwi props as a brand. I'm meaning a feathering prop rather than a fixed pitch or a folding prop, which I'm about to show you. So the, with a cost base analysis, I found that in my opinion, I didn't want to go the most expensive option. Uh, and the advantages of having strong reverse, we're in a catamaran, so we mainly reverse park anyway. And when things aren't quite going to plan, our most important thrust is forwards and on a folding propeller, that's not normally affected. So I felt having a good strong reverse wasn't as important as having more efficiency in forwards and the price point. And due to the blade shape, most feathering props aren't as efficient as folding props or the most efficient one generally speaking is the fixed pitch so that is why we did not go with feathering we went with folding now the way a folding prop works is when you're motoring along the blades are out when you want to sail they fold up reduce the resistance in the water and away you go the disadvantage of this is is what holds the blades out is centrifugal force. So they can sometimes lack power in reverse. So if you're parking front ways and need to crash stop or anything like that when things aren't going to plan, these sometimes aren't the best option. 
for us as we reverse park in most tricky situations um, then I found that this one hopefully we'll be able to tell you once they're fitted it shouldn't affect us too much and you can see the difference in blade shape just here so so much more efficient when it actually comes to it this propeller here although you probably can't tell is actually smaller than this propeller this is an 18 and a half inch diameter this is 18 inch so the pitch is also slightly less on this one so but as it has such a big surface area it'll grip the water so much better and hopefully give us a lot more thrust now let's talk about why we went with flexafold so I spent a fair bit of time on the internet uh, and there's a yachting monthly magazine that did a comparative analysis on all the different propellers and uh, when I was looking at it um, for thrust forward the Kiwi prop did the worst and flexofold did the best so theoretically speaking this one here should give us a lot more thrust we are a slightly heavier boat uh, and hopefully be a little bit more efficient through the water when you look at the blades you can tell they they don't look too hydrodynamic the kiwi props are made out of uh, a plastic called zytel the blades are and uh, in my opinion there's a fair bit of flex in them so therefore that's why they've had to make this boss here so thick then the actual interior boss of the propeller is 316 stainless which i like where they're falling down for us though is that we find that they they wear out in the blades and become very sloppy and also this is a spring-loaded tension and both of the this this the ones on the current that are currently on the boat the spring-loaded tension is failing so one of them is locked in reverse and won't move and the other one is uh locked in forwards like this and won't move this way so I've freed both of them up a couple of times now and they came to, seem to keep failing. So for that reason, uh, with, the, with one of them being locked and not moving this way, when we go to hit reverse, the blades hit there and it's a severe pitch and makes parking fairly challenging because it'll work and then one of the blades will come across and it'll start making a clunking noise and I have to take that engine out of reverse. The other one is locked in forwards with this all the way around so it doesn't feather at all. So I have to put the engines in reverse when we're sailing so it doesn't spin the shaft uh, and therefore is creating quite a bit of drag and slowing us down which makes going a feathering prop fairly pointless and we might as well have the cheaper, more robust fixed pitch options on. Um, also when you look at the surface area of the blades I mean they're just nowhere near as big uh, as these ones here so I am a Kiwi I love Kiwi things most of the time I do not love these props and uh, unfortunately I wouldn't recommend them they've given us nothing but trouble they're the reason that we have two underneath the water a whole spare one here and a complete spare blade as well um, and you can see here even the retainers that we've got different types of retainers because we've had to replace them over time as well um, and yeah if they worked perfectly we wouldn't have any spare parts for them or need the need for any spare parts for them but unfortunately with these ones we do now the kiwi props are one of the cheapest feathering props out there and one advantage for a catamaran is that they are quite light the blades weigh virtually nothing very very light where our new flexo fold is considerably heavier heavier so the reasons we went with flexo fold is uh, a the the magazine really recommended them and when they did the comparative analysis between 15 different propellers for thrust forwards it came out on top didn't do too bad with regards to prop walk or in reverse now we can talk a little bit about prop walk um, prop walk basically is the water is slightly denser the deeper you go not as dense here so when you have it in reverse what happens is 
it grips the denser water better than it does on the top and has a paddle wheel effect and walks the boat over. As we're a catamaran, that doesn't affect us too much. Generally speaking, on high speed boats, you have counter rotating propellers, and that was my plan to go with counter rotating. Um, the reason being is depending on how the boat's designed, but most of the time you want to get the stern up and the bow down to go nice and fast. So, therefore, you have them rotating outboard where they're getting the cleaner, clearer water. The water will run faster in between the hulls, so therefore have less resistance. And on the downward stroke is when it hits the most resistance, lifts up the bum and gets you going along. We've gone with two right-handed propellers, and the main reason for that is in case things do go wrong, spare parts. They're both exactly the same. If, uh, say, something goes wrong with our port engine, but our starboard propeller isn't very good, we can just swap it over. The gearing's still gonna be the same. We can mix and match and things in the future. And when it comes to prop walk with parking, our hulls are very far apart. Um, so it wouldn't really matter then. Our aim is to steam most of the time under one engine. So therefore it wouldn't matter which way they rotate, they won't be counter rotating anyway. So we've gone with two right-handed propellers. And uh, flexo fold also are very simple in their mechanisms and price point. Comparatively speaking, we compared them to props like a gory prop. Locally, the gory props were gonna cost us three and a half thousand dollars more. So in a percentage off the top of my head, it was nearly 20% more. So um, we went with something nice and simple. What we have found, I did a fair bit of research online. They say one of the main problems with these is that the blades will fall off or that it does come off the hub. So my plan is to use hydraulic Loctite. The reason I'm gonna go with hydraulic Loctite is that it is, uh, I've used it in the past. It is waterproof and it sets very hard, um, but then as soon as you break it, you can still undo it and get it off. So I am gonna be using Loctite to ensure that it doesn't fall off as we go along. If you look up uh, the magazine article that I'm talking about that has the comparative analysis between the different propeller brands, you will look, um, everyone knows that I, I you know, enjoy a bargain and the, the two bladed propellers uh, have similar efficiency and at a, a far greater price point as in a lot cheaper. The reason that we go three bladed is because we have a skeg. And what happens is if you have a two bladed propeller, uh, you'll have them gripping water either side, then behind the skeg, then gripping water, then behind the skeg. And it usually at higher revs will create some kind of vibration. Where if you go three bladed, it's offset and the blades are behind the shadow at a different time. So I do think two bladed propellers are fantastic. And if we had a different type of running gear, then that would be the option. But we've gone the three bladed because we have a skeg, uh, it would create vibration if we went two bladed. So when I was looking at the, the different propellers, uh, as we know, price point was important to me, but also I enjoy having things that are a little bit simpler. Uh, I believe that if they're quite simple in operation, then they last a bit better and they're a lot less complicated to fix if I've got to work on it myself. So let's go through the FlexoFold propeller. You've got your brass boss here. There's a Teflon insert here and the Teflon insert is just to stop when it shocks when it opens out. So that's something if it does wear out, you know, it can be replaced over time. In the center here is where the locking nut goes. So when all of the blades are out, you put that in through there. As I said, when I was doing my research on the forums, one of the common faults that people said is that the propeller falls off. What there is, is there's a grub screw here. Now that screw goes all the way through and rests on wherever you have set this. 
So uh, my answer to it falling off is uh, the only way that it'll be able to come undone is if the grub screw comes undone. So we will be using Loctite on that. Grease everywhere else. And then Loctite also on the individual blade retainers. When I talk about blade retainers, I mean, what happens is the blade comes in through on the side here. Another thing I'm really impressed with FlexoFold is the tolerances. The machining on this prop is absolutely fantastic. The tolerances are perfect. There's no real slop or any of that kind of stuff in it. And same with when you have the actual shaft that goes through. You can see the shaft has a notch in it. Now what that notch is, is when you place it in, again the tolerances are amazing on this propeller. You go all the way through. You put this down in the side here and that is a retainer and the way it works is is it slides right in next to the shaft there and locks it in place so that way it can't fall out when that's in there so again we're going to be using hydraulic loctite on this one here as we put it in so that these don't come undone now worst case scenario if these did come undone you couldn't lose them anyway the reason being is once you put the third blade in there this here this face plate it goes on top and then you have other screws that go in here so these would only be able to wind out to that far anyway unless this came off so again we'll use some hydraulic loctite in those then the anode goes on top of that and put on another thing I really like about it is how simple it is to put the anode on what that means is uh, we should be able to do it in the water it's just a basic allen key and a single thread straight on in the center there and again there's no way that unless the anode is completely chewed out there is no way that the screws underneath can be undone as well these ones here go straight in there like that and you can see it's slightly recessed and the recess is what they sit in so these won't be able to undo because they'll be held on by the anode then the next ones underneath they're held on by the face plate and everything is very very secure so I do believe that it may have been a problem in the past and it potentially could be a problem a lot of people did seem to have it on the forums but if we put these control measures in place I really don't think that it'll fall off the shaft but we'll, we'll wait and see our next step is to confirm that we are doing the right um, choice swapping that we're going to be doing a comparative analysis uh, we will uh, do different rev ranges in a controlled environment with these propellers and then do different rev ranges in controlled environment with these propellers then we're going to see if it affects our fuel consumption the results of that's going to take a little while i'll have to get back to you in a few episodes um, to see i won't be able to do it just in one episode it'll be a little bit inaccurate to see if our fuel consumption is altered but we'll definitely be able to see if the speed changes due to the different propellers but yeah i love the the machining it comes already with its own anodes so it comes already with its own allen keys and yeah well it is i'm really really excited to put them on and try so the next rabbit hole that i'm going to go down is coating because we've spent so much money on the props um i believe then what we have done in the past is just the same anti-fail coating that's on the hull um i believe we'll probably look at a, a slightly more expensive and more uh, efficient options so uh, these came so fast in the mail that I don't have anything organized right now but um, that'll be my next step and I'll let you know how we go thank you so much for watching if you are enjoying our videos and would like to help support us making videos and content consider becoming a patreon the link is in the description below and don't forget to click those like and subscribe buttons and we will see you all next week.